What's up guys, it's Alex, and today we're gonna to be doing a complete guide for after you finished building your computer. <sighs> Come here. Yo, what is going on? I got a pre-build, yep. Let's talk about setting up this guy from a box and getting it to run pretty smooth. Let's jump into that. Ah, the world of PC gaming, frustration, out of stock parts, and a whole lot of scalpers. So if you've made it this far, you've either managed to find all the PC parts you needed for your build, or you've fallen into the deepest, darkest pit of despair and purchased a pre-built gaming PC. Whether or not you've done one or the other, you've landed here. Thankfully, the YouTube overlords have directed you in my path and the algorithm is happy. Let's just go from there. So a lot of people are currently getting into the PC community, which is awesome. Unfortunately, graphics card prices are still weird and stock is pretty iffy, but there are some solid pre-built deals out there. While I'm not really a fan of pre-built PCs, the reality is a bunch of people buy pre-builds based on ease of use and availability. But I'll always personally suggest building your own if that's a possible scenario. I do have a guide on building your first PC, which I'll have linked in the description or up here. But regardless of that, today I'm just gonna go over some of the tips that I use when I'm setting up a freshly built PC or the out of the box pre-built PC. If you haven't already picked up your pre-built, I definitely recommend iBuyPower based on their value per dollar and solid customer service. I'll have all the links in the description down below if you are interested in checking out some of these gaming PCs, but you should still be careful when it comes to pre-built gaming PCs. There are a lot of companies that make pre-builds that use predatory upselling methods, whether it's customer service or just make completely junk systems that use pretty crappy parts and try to scam beginners or try to scam the parents of children that want some sick systems for their kids. So just be careful out there. But let's get to the actual tips and setup now. This is very simple and relatively quick to do out of the box. Obviously the first thing you should do is take the computer out of the box and set it on the table. I like to place all of the documentation that comes with the pre-build to the side. And then I like to take the driver disks and use them as Frisbees because by the time you get them, they're completely outdated. Here we can actually get into opening the side panel by unscrewing the panel screws and popping off the side panel. Then we can make sure that there isn't any additional packing foam still stuffed in there, which is usually there to protect the components during shipping. I also make sure that all the cables are plugged in correctly, which you'd assume would already be done, but you'd be surprised how many pre-builds have their connections loose or just flat out not plugged in after shipment. They're usually block connectors and they just plug in with these little clamps. Pretty simple. After you've plugged them all in and made sure everything's good, go ahead and place the side panel back on. After that's all done, go ahead and plug in your monitor display cable either HDMI or DisplayPort. Make sure it's plugged into the graphics card and not the motherboard. Plug in your mouse and keyboard into the USB ports and flip the power switch on before you hit the power button. Make sure you don't plug in your ethernet or Wi-Fi antennas yet. Once you've plugged everything back in, you're ready to box it back up and return it because it's a pre-build. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, relax. PC availability is kind of on the floor right now, so if you bought a pre-build, I don't blame you. Some of us can't get graphics cards or parts, so the pre-build guys got the parts and the graphics cards, but sometimes you have some bloatware along because, you know, pre-build companies love to stuff their computers with tons of garbage and software that you don't necessarily want. So some people like to completely reinstall Windows, get a fresh, clean install, wipe all that garbage out. However, I think that you really don't have to overcomplicate it. You can go ahead and uninstall these programs that you don't want once you finish your Windows installation. All right, so now I'm gonna walk you through your entire PC boot up process. I'm gonna do it right here with you. You have nothing to worry about. You're in safe hands. So the first thing we're gonna see is the PC actually boot up. You're gonna get the just a moment screen and then it's gonna start with your region. I like to select United States because that's where I live. Go ahead and select whichever region you live in and then go ahead and select the keyboard layout you're going to be using. I'm gonna be using the US layout 
And for the second layout, I just like to skip right over this. Now here's the step that I like to focus on a lot. I don't like to connect any network before I set this computer up. I select, I don't have a network, and then I continue with limited setup. Now, the reason why I do this is because Windows likes to load up all their OneDrive and all these extra internet features that I don't necessarily want. I go ahead and hit next, and then I name the computer. So I like to keep this step pretty simple. I just do a local account and then I skip the password so I don't have to answer security questions now. I can do them later. For privacy settings, it's a big no-no for me. I turn them all off and then I proceed from here. Now I get to Cortana, which I also don't use. Windows loves throwing just garbage in front of your face constantly. Now I'm in the sub screen. It's gonna say hello and then we're gonna get to the desktop. First thing I like to do on the desktop is go ahead and type in updates and start the Windows updates. Here, all the security framework chipset drivers are all gonna automatically update through Windows. You might get some outdated graphics drivers getting updated, but we can go ahead and manually reinstall them later. I like to install these updates before I install individual drivers because some drivers actually require certain updated versions of Windows to properly install. So go ahead, do your Windows drivers, let the PC update, and while this is going on in the background, I like to go to the bottom left-hand corner and I like to type in programs. Here, I can uninstall all the junk and bloatware that's installed normally on some of these pre-builds. Thankfully, with iBuyPower, this doesn't really have a problem. There's not a lot of junk on this system, but I'll uninstall like Microsoft Solitaire and some of the other weird stuff that Microsoft loves to put on these things. After that's all done, your PC is probably gonna ask you to restart, which is completely fine. It's just part of the update process. After this is done and your computer restarts, we can go ahead and get into installing the individual drivers, like the ones from NVIDIA. So to find that, I usually just type in NVIDIA drivers, find the official NVIDIA drivers from nvidia.com. I download the automatic driver installer. I let that run and then eventually I can get to the installs here. Keep in mind, some pre-built computers already have the NVIDIA GeForce Experience installed. So if you are building from scratch or your pre-built doesn't have the GeForce Experience on the desktop, it's completely fine. You can go ahead and install it just the way I did here. I now run the installer, go ahead and click yes, let it do its thing, and then go ahead and press agree and install. From here, I go ahead and wait again, and now I can go into custom installation where I hit yes again, wait for this to do its thing yet again, and then from here, what I can do is I can actually go ahead and click perform a clean install. Now a clean install is basically gonna override all the previous NVIDIA settings. I find that it's a lot less buggy than having the express installation. So I like a clean install. I would recommend doing that. From here, I can see that uh, we're now done with our game ready drivers. We're at the latest version and we're done with the GPU drivers. Now the next thing I like to do is I like to mess with the NVIDIA control panel. Sometimes it'll ask you to do the, uh, you know, the official agreement then once I'm actually in here, I can go to display and I can check if we're running at the right resolution. So I make sure we're running at the right resolution for the monitor and then I select the right refresh rate. I go ahead and push apply and then we're pretty much golden. We're gonna have a nice refresh rate and if you are an AMD user, we can actually do this in a different method or sometimes the NVIDIA control panel can be a little weird too. So go ahead and go to display settings, scroll down to advanced display settings and then you'll see the refresh rate at the bottom and you can go ahead and click on that and set that to 144 hertz. Sometimes it'll be like 143.981, but it's a little strange sometimes. Go ahead and deal with that. Next thing I like to do is go back into the NVIDIA control panel. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some NVIDIA Vibrance color settings. So this is up to personal preference. Some people like having more of a colorful and saturated game. I find that in some games, it makes games look really nice and pretty while you are sacrificing some color accuracy, really and honestly, you can even get some better views when you're actually playing different games like Warzone and some other FPS shooters. I like to tweak this a little bit, sometimes turning up the contrast of the gamma so I can see people in shadows. It's really up to you. Go ahead and try this up to your own preferences. After I'm done with that, I go to manage 3D settings and we can do some performance tweaking because we want to suck out a little bit more juice out of the graphics card. I go ahead and scroll down to power management mode and set that from optimal power to perform maximum performance. I then scroll down and then I, I change the texture filtering quality to high performance as well. And this is just a little tweak that's gonna get your graphics card to run a little bit faster. I find that your FPS goes up a little bit in benchmarks. From here, I use Brave, which is my favorite browser. I go to Edge, download Brave, and replace Edge. I feel like Edge has one purpose and it's to install another browser. So go ahead and install that, let that run. And then from here, we can actually install 
Ninite. What Ninite is gonna do is it's essentially going to create this like program installer where you're gonna have all these different programs and they're all going to install in a really clean way. I also like to set this to my default browser because Edge sucks. If you're an Edge elitist, I'm sorry. We'll agree to disagree. I don't like Edge. Bye-bye, Edge. You're getting replaced. And now I basically just pin this to the taskbar and delete the icons from my desktop. And of course, you can go ahead and clear them from the recycling bin. I then go back to Brave, and then like I said before, we're gonna go to Ninite, Ninite.com, and then we can install and pick the apps we're actually gonna be using. So in this case scenario, I will be installing Chrome and have the overlords watching me, but that's completely fine. We're gonna do Discord, VLC, Spotify. If you like recording audio, I also recommend Audacity. Greenshots, great for sharing screenshots with friends. Malwarebytes if you want. And then let's see what else I'll do. Winderstat is great for hard drive management. I think that's it. Sometimes I'll install 7-Zip or WinRAR. And then Steam, of course. So we're gonna go ahead and press get Ninite, let that download. A lot of times when you're first setting up your computer, it's just going to be a lot of downloading and waiting and downloading and waiting, especially when you are going to install all your games too. So this is gonna go ahead and prepare the setup. I like to press yes here, obviously. And this is gonna take quite a bit. I sped this up a little bit, so we're not gonna have as big of a wait time here. Go ahead and let that all install. And really and honestly, we're getting to the end of the setup process. I like to do these walkthrough videos. I think they help out people and hopefully you guys enjoy them. All right, let's go. Let's, what do we do next? We're going to click on File Explorer, go to View, Options, and then instead of, I go to Open File Explorer to this PC, and then I go to View, scroll down to display the full path in the bar, show hidden files and drives, don't hide any drives, don't hide extensions for known file types. I press Apply, OK, and then I think that Windows is a lot more usable when you give this little tweaks. I then like to go to Personalization, in the bottom left hand corner under settings. And basically what I can do here is I can set everything to dark mode so it doesn't blow my eyes out when I am using this at night. And then I set an accent color. And really and honestly, that's everything you really need to do when it comes to tweaking up your pre-built computer. You can obviously go into the BIOS, adjust RAM settings so you can have XMP on, which is gonna overclock your memory. You can do that pretty simply just by spamming F5 or one of the delete keys. It's kind of different depending on the motherboard you're using, but I wanted to keep it pretty simple for the most part. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys want to see anything else. If you have any tips or programs you recommend for setting up pre-built computers or your own computers, go ahead and drop it down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.